I have a theory that Floyd Mayweather is the greatest great of all time, meaning he is greater at his skill of boxing than Stephen Hawking was at science. Okay. Then I it, can live with that, but I don't know if I would call him the greatest fighter of all time. First of all, Floyd Mayweather is one of the greatest ever. Um, he's a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant defensive fighter. His speed, his bass, his boxing savvy. He's just a savant. He's just something genius. special. No question about yeah. it. But I got to look at the Sugar Ray Leonard's of the world. So you came up at a time where you're watching Sugar Ray. I watched Sugar Ray. I watched yeah. Pino Cuevas. I watched Thomas the Hitman yeah. Hearns, Hagler, Mugabe, yeah. all of these cats. I mean, uh, you know, uh, 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 you know, um, uh, what's his name? Aaron Pryor, Alexis Aguilo, uh, yeah. Salvador Sanchez. Salvador Sanchez. But I mean, yeah, I, mean yeah, I come yeah, yeah. up with that era. Yeah, yeah. And I'm telling you right now, you can look at, of course, Ali Foreman, Frazier, Norton, mm -hmm. Shavers, all of these guys, mm -hmm. right? It's not just about your skill set. It's who you do it against. Your level of competition. Is it possible that he's so far beyond his level of competition that he made it look easy? Well, I think he did as a lightweight. When he went up to the welterweight division, not so much. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Now, if I mean, well, taking his, out Canelo his, his, his the way the great, he took well, out. Well, well, he, he just gave him a boxing lesson, but Canelo was 22 years old. See, I remember That's that. an excuse, though. Well, I don't like this, well, like he's 22, he's well, too young. I will tell like, you this. Well, you know, you do have to take that into consideration. The guy had 100 fights. Well, let me explain. 22. You have to take that into consideration when boxing is the issue. Now, if he got knocked on his ass, that's different. But when he simply got schooled, when you swinging a punch and Floyd is tapping you on your shoulder saying, I'm behind you, mm -hmm. that's a problem. You understand what I'm saying? That's just a skill like, you know, you... Well, we could credit Floyd with that. Of course, I am crediting. I'm saying he's a brilliant, brilliant boxer. Mm -hmm. You know, this Floyd knew how to move before you even threw the damn punch. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You got to be a veteran to know how to overcome that. Yeah. You can't put a novice into the ring with Floyd Money yeah. Mayweather. Yeah. You understand? Yeah, yeah. He's going to school you. Yeah. What I'm saying to you is that if you want to make an argument on Floyd Money Mayweather's half, which I'm not summarily dismissing, yeah. I would tell you it's this. Floyd Money Mayweather was undefeated for the last half of his career with one hand. He oh, constantly broke right, his hand. Yeah. yeah. He constantly broke his hand. And so because he broke his hand, you got to give credit where credit is due. He would go into a ring knowing he had no shot at knocking somebody out yeah, that's crazy. because his hands were hurt too much yeah. and literally walked in the ring and said, I'm going to embarrass you and humiliate you by showing the world you can't hit me. Yeah. Wow, that's we crazy. were in Jacksonville. He hit Arturo Gotti. Beat <laughs> shot, beat <laughs> but we were in Jacksonville, Florida. The Philadelphia Eagles were playing the New England Patriots in the Super Bowl. And it was a week before, a few days before the, the, the game. And I go up to Floyd and I'm like, look, man, you know, this is, man, this is modern day Rocky. You can't play around with Gaddy. You, you got you to gotta take him out. You can't play. I'm just, I'm just telling you, we in the VIP section. Floyd grabs me, pulls me closer to him. Ain't no motherfucker with six losses beating me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> Don't yeah, ever yeah. forget that. Yeah. I said, what? Music blaring, VIP section, we in the club, the whole shit. He said, I said, ain't no motherfucker with six losses ever beating me. Go. Watch. Yeah. So I said, fine, I'm going to be there. Yeah. <laughs> Fight was in Atlantic City. Yeah. I flew back from Jacksonville, and I went to Atlantic City yeah. for the next week for the fight. And Floyd beat that brother. Ooh, he stole bad. It. Wow. it was it bad. It was, it, was, it was a point in there. Roger Mayweather like, looked at the cameras like, Come, keep watching this ass whipping. Yeah. And Floyd hit that brother with like six in a straight yeah. rights. I yeah. said, oh, my God, just yeah. picked yeah. Him apart, yeah. yeah. Just like he told me, he was, was going to happen. Wow. There's a my my dad used to be a, a a journalist. He would go to Ali's camp a lot, and um, he asked Ali before he fought Foreman. He's like, "How the hell are you going to beat this guy?" Remember Foreman? That was when Foreman hit Frazier and lifted him off the fucking canvas That's with right. an uppercut. Remember? Yes, yes. And uh, and uh, and uh, Ali told him he goes, uh, "You have to understand, like I'm a scientific boxer." He goes, "This this new stuff. This is what you do." You could be the best at this, he goes, but I'm the greatest ever at this. Right. And it is a science to me. And I have figured out how I'm going to break this guy down. Now, the irony is he went into the ring with that plan, and he was like, 
this shit ain't fucking working. I need to <laughs> lay on these ropes. But that's to the great that's right. to the greatness of Ali for sure. Yeah. But there's certain guys that you can just Well, it's funny you bring that up because I, I write about it in my book. That's my father's funniest moment. I've never seen my father laugh harder than when Foreman knocked Frazier upside the back of the head mm -hmm. for that final knockdown. I mean, it was just hilarious. You know, it was like my father, my father laughed about that until the day he died. Well, why? He just, I mean, it was 50 years. Then spanning 50 years, he still laughed at it until the day he died about how Frazier got knocked. Because he had never seen somebody get knocked up out of the back of the head. That way, Fra the foreman hit Frazier. And, and Foreman was menacing. You know, Foreman was arguably the most menacing boxer in history. Yeah. People talk about Mike Tyson. Go back and watch, watch Foreman. Watch And how yeah. Foreman scared the living hell out of them. But when you think about brilliant boxers, yeah. Floyd's up there, Sugar Ray was, yeah. Ali, of course, the yeah. greatest, because who went through the adversity that Ali went through, of which is why we call him the greatest. Yeah. But Floyd's up there, he's in the discussion. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so the, the, the question is, obviously Brady's retired. Yeah. And I think That's a lot nice. of people are like, I think they're hesitant to be like, he's the greatest athlete ever. I think yep. he is. Do you think... First of all, the word athlete has no business in the same sentence as Tom Brady. It, because? In terms of, that wasn't what he was. He is an elite passer of the football and an elite football mind, which both contributed to him being the greatest quarterback ever. But he ain't the greatest athlete. That is not true. What makes you an athlete? Yeah. Well, speed, quickness, agility, um, along with various other skills that come along with the respective sport that you're in. Mm -hmm. Tom Brady didn't have those things. You know what? Mike Francesa, formerly of Mike and the Mad Dog radio show, they were on my show First Take last week. And they had their, they had their reunion. And Mike <laughs> Francesa made a very valid point. He said, I love Tom Brady. He's got the greatest quarter resume as a quarterback ever. He's the GOAT, no doubt about it. No shade thrown on him. He said, but we need to understand he's not, he's not, he's neither the greatest regular season quarterback ever. That was Peyton Manning. And he said, nor is he the greatest Super Bowl quarterback ever. That would be Joe Montana. He said, those two quarterbacks, he said, you're talking about Tom Brady. Tom Brady was neither the greatest regular season quarterback nor the greatest Super Bowl quarterback. But that's 10 Super Bowls versus four. I understand that. But what I'm saying to you is that Tom Brady, say what you will. The fact of the matter is that was factually correct. Well, I yeah, I would just disagree with greatest because it's not winning percentage to me. It is, if you got to take everything into account. Well, 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 then don't then take everything, not just what you want to. Like for example, you look at the AFC East. Mm -hmm. Well, the Jets, the Miami Dolphins, and the Buffalo Bills spent years being they were trash. A they were a joke. So you are automatic. You are an automatic top two seed in the AFC for years. Yeah. You guaranteed a home playoff game at Foxborough, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. Most of the time, two games in the AFC Championship Absolutely. game. So you got to take that into account, right? Yep. Then you got to take into account the first three Super Bowls Tom Brady won. It's because of that defense. Mm. New England. Bill Belichick coached defense. He obviously was a defensive coordinator before he became the head coach. Ty Law and McGinnis and the rest of the crew. Mm. The defense led the New England Patriots, not the Patriots' offense. They led, but the winning drive was always Brady. I understand and that. That was every Super Bowl. Well, you could say that. Well, what about the losing drive? Because guess what? Uh, in the AFC Championship game, he couldn't could put together a winning drive against Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning had beat him. You also got to remember in the Super Bowl, Eli Manning beat him twice. Yeah, Eli got him twice. Okay, so you got to look at all of that. And by the way, he should have lost to Seattle if Pete Carroll and Daryl Bevel didn't call the stupidest play in NFL history when Marshawn Lynch is running, ha wreaking havoc over the New England Patriots, mm. get you to literally the half yard line, and they decide to have Russell Wilson throw a pass over the middle that gets intercepted by Michael and Butler at the half yard line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what they did. He should have lost that Super Bowl. He was down 28 to 3 against Atlanta, but. Matt Dan Ryan Quinn yeah. and Kyle Shanahan decide not to run the football and throw the damn football so an incomplete pass stops the clock, which gave New England all the time in the world to come back and erase the 25-point <laughs> deficit when they were supposed to run the damn football. So there's a lot of things. And Matt Ryan to. took that sack that took them out of field goal range that ended up letting New yes. England come back. So Correct. all that I get, but again, to me, overall encompassing 10 Super Bowls is crazy. That's yes. more than every team ever. Well, nobody's saying he's not the GOAT. They're just saying that you could be the GOAT 
without being the best regular season or the best Super Bowl quarterback. Mm-hmm. That's what they're saying. They still called him okay. the GOAT. Yeah. They're saying, but he's not the greatest regular season quarterback and he's not the greatest Super Bowl quarterback. But the athlete conversation is, I, I thought there's an athlete as someone who plays a sport because the best athlete is probably some CrossFit guy. But we're not going to call That's them fair. the greatest That's athlete. That's fair. I get where you're coming from. But I guess what I'm saying is when we look at a respective sport mm-hmm. and we marvel at the greatness of a player, yeah. it's not us- It's usually because of what they do. That's true. But when you say athlete, you take into consideration a multitude of things. Primetime Deion Sanders is the greatest cornerback that ever lived. Yes. But damn, could he play wide receiver. Yeah. And damn, could he return punts and kickoffs yeah. too. Yeah. And damn, when he got into the open field, you could pick the fastest dude out there. They had no shot of catching him, yeah. which is how he came up with the dance. Because yeah. he could afford to dance because there was nobody on Around. his heels. Yeah, because yeah. he would just run away from the crowd. Yeah. Because that's how light and fast and quick primetime Deion Sanders was. There's a multitude of things. Bo Jackson, baseball yeah. and football. And you saw the versatility of his skill set. And the repertoire that he had available to him. You looked at that. Caitlyn so Jenner won a men's decathlon as a woman. That's okay. amazing. Think about yeah. that. That's impressive. I'm That's not, pretty yeah. crazy. Yeah. I'm yeah. Not <laughs> <laughs> He's like, no, he's the mouse is watching. <laughs> <laughs> so then maybe the greatest athlete of all time is Usain Bolt. Okay. Because everybody in the world has run straight. Not everybody's played baseball. Not everybody's played basketball. Well, you can say he's the fastest man, but again, I said versatility when I came when it came to athletics. Mm. I didn't say speed. I said versatility. So if you say you're saying Bo, I'm you're talking speed. I'm talking versatility. So Bo Jackson runs, you know, runs over. I hear it. You know, saying. runs yeah, over yeah, guys yeah, when he yeah, plays yeah, baseball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dion was playing baseball. Dion yeah. played baseball and football as well. So the who's your number one? Number one athlete of all time. Yeah. A lot of people try to say Jim Brown because he played football and lacrosse. Lacrosse. Apparently, yeah. um, he was amazing at lacrosse. The greatest. He, he was. He, he was the greatest. He was amazing yeah. at lacrosse. I'm going to tell you it's a cross between primetime Deion Sanders and Bo Jackson. Mm. Oh, mm. That's me. Mm. In terms of athleticism. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, if you want to tell me LeBron, because I can imagine LeBron on a football field. What about Tiana Trump? Because a lot of people don't include her in. <laughs> don't know her. <laughs> Amazing skill set. I have no one talk about diversity. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know. She goes yeah. knocking at your hotel room yeah. one day. <laughs> you never opened the door one time? <laughs> huh? Open the door, say hello. <laughs> Very nice to meet you. Sorry, not interested. Wrong have a nice room. evening. Let me try get Look at the peephole one time. Make my room service. No, no, look at the peephole. Open the door. Okay. Yeah, yeah.